Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great evening. I am back uh, from working down the Red Brick House, and I'm back here at my man cave. Um, something that has bothered me with this Michael Irvin case. Um, let me first say, I, I, I am the jack of all trades, but being an attorney is not one of them. Being a criminal investigator is not one of them. But I am a guy who is a problem solver, okay? And anybody who knows me knows I come up with stuff. I, I may not know the technical way that you're supposed to do it, but I'll find a way to get a job done. And this, a lot of times with me, I'll have a problem and I will look for a solution and it comes to me in the middle of the night or while I'm driving or something like that. People will say, hey, we need to do this, this, and this. And I say, I'll get back to you because I know eventually, you know, something will snap. Now, I've had a lot of people who have said uh, a lot of different things about it that, you know, I'm wrong, that Michael Irvin is a scumbag and you just need to let it go. Okay, I, I get that. But I ask you for a second, turn all of that stuff off for just a second and just let me go through right here. This is the 15-page affidavit that was filed in the court by Marriott detailing what Michael Irving has allegedly done, okay? But there's something in here that everybody missed. Everybody missed this. And I want to show this to you, but before I show it to you, I need to set all of this stuff up because it's, kind of, it, it's really kind of interesting. Okay, so um, again... In plaintiff Michael Urban's late, okay, the, uh, latest attempt to feed the media frenzy he created, he and his counsel have live streamed press conferences on March 8th, in which they made inflammatory material prejudice statements about evidence in this case. For example, during the press conference, Michael Urban's provided a self serving, inaccurate summary of the video footage Marriott produced. Okay, so that's the opening thing, and that does go on. Um, it then goes on to the National Football League arranged for him to stay at the hotel. We don't need to go through all that. We all know that that's, you know, and one of the official partners of the NFL, and they would do that. Okay, so here is in Section B on page 3 of it. This is a motion for protective order. So this is them saying, we can't put these people out here. Mind you, Michael Irvin has actually taken the high road because in all of the filings that they have done, it's all Jane Doe. And actually, you have the right to face and know who your accusers are. And that is actually public record. But they have not actually put that out there. Now, they put the manager out there, the restaurant, co you know, the, all the other people's names. But the victim, they have not put out there. Which is kind of saying, hey, look, we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to look out for her. We don't want her to get negative, you know things happen because people people are crazy out here these days okay so here's where i want to read the exactly what marriott says and then i want to play the tape and then show you what i discovered irving arrived at the hotel february 5th that evening he returned to the hotel after dinner and drinks and appeared to be visibly intoxicated in the hotel bar the dust cutter Later in the evening, near the end of the shift, the victim walked from the back of the house towards the dust cutter in the course of her normal duties. As the victim entered the dust cutter, Irving flagged her down, and the two stepped into the hotel lobby. Okay, they stepped in the hotel lobby. Irving shook her hand, asked if she worked there, and what she did there. The victim confirmed that she worked there and asked if she could help Irving with anything. Irving then stated that she was attractive and reached out her hand and asked her name and introduced herself as Michael. Irving then uh, asked whether she watched football, to which the victim responded that she did not. Irving told her she should look him up on the Internet sometimes. Irving reached out and touched the victim's arm during the conversation without her consent, causing her to step back, becoming visibly uncomfortable. Okay. So, let's... Watch the tape, okay, here, all right? So here we go. She walks in, okay, you see Michael Irvin is right there. Uh, Michael Irvin, they stop, okay. She turns, 
And now, okay. Did she re- did he reach out for her and she was visibly uncomfortable and moved back? Is that what we're actually seeing right there? Hold it for a second. Let me say what transpired before she stepped back. Okay. As the victim entered the dust cutter, Irving flagged her down, and the two stepped into the hotel lobby. Irving shook her hand, asked if she worked there and what she did there. The victim confirmed that she worked there and asked if she could help Irving with anything. Irving then stated she was attractive and reached out his hand, asked her, asked her name, and introduced herself as Michael. Michael then asked whether she watched football, to which the victim responded that she did not. Irving told her she should look him up on the internet sometime. Irving also reached out and touched the victim's arm during the conversation without her consent, causing her to step back because of being visibly uncomfortable. Okay. So we see all this right here, right? So was this whole conversation happening before that moment? Because let's keep watching. Let's keep watching. Okay, now, keep watching, and and tell me when she backs up. So we've already had the first handshake. We've had her him touch her on the arm, and she backed up. Okay, they're having a conversation. Okay, all right. She's nodding her head. Okay, all right, right. Here we go. Normal conversation here. I still don't see where she looks uncomfortable. She, where, where, where does she look uncomfortable here? And where does she, because it takes some time. Uh, again, I'm still looking for the step back and looking awkward. Because the only time she steps back is when they first start the conversation. Right? Right? Okay, so there. Okay. It looks like he's laughing, and he grabbed her, you know, touched her on the arm there as he's falling over. Did she back up then? I didn't see. I, I must have missed it. Okay, so they're still having conversation. Okay. And she shakes hands, and that's it. Okay. So let's go back here for just a second. Again, I'm not an investigator. I'm not an attorney. But here we go again. So you see this, right? They're having a conversation. Now, here's my thing on the way I interpret what just happened there. Okay? Is you have this guy who's walking through, right? He's walking through the passageway. Michael Irvin's standing in the middle of this entranceway. To me, it looks like he is like, let's move out of the spot. But now check this out, okay? Because I've got a whole different piece in here. This is actually blown up of that transaction and slowed down, okay? And I can't believe nobody saw this, okay? I, I, I want to stop. Okay, here he is. Okay, Michael Irvin, he turns there. Okay, they're talking. Right there, I'm going to stop it. Do you see Michael Irvin's left hand? Do you see his left hand has, let me grab a shirt. Michael Irvin, in his left hand, has a coat. He has a coat in his hand. So I know Michael Irvin was great at catching the football all over the field, but I'm not sure how he didn't fumble the jacket if he was trying to grab her. Watch it. He doesn't actually touch her. Look, you see that, right? It's like, hey, let's move out the way. Look at it. He didn't look that's that's it. Look at it. Watch it in slow motion. In his hand, he's got a jacket. Look at this. They shook hands right there. 
The guy walks past, and look, oh, let's move out the way. You're telling me that him with, 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 with his jacket in his hand is sexually harassing her? Come on, look at it real slow. Now, this is the only time that she backed up. The only time that she backed up. So I ask you, as we see the silhouette, and we're doing this again, look. She's looking directly at him, like, you know, looking up at him. He motions to her with a jacket in his hand. Now, again, I'm not an attorney. I am not an attorney. I am not the one who would be the one to uh, judge this. But what I see there... What I see there, I'm sorry. Okay, so now let's go back to it again and read this one more time, okay? I get things happen. Our memory gets foggy. It's the next day. Let me read it again. Near the end of her shift, the victim walked from the back of the house towards the dust cutter um, in the course of her normal duties. As the victim entered the dust cutter, Irving flagged her down and two stepped into the hotel lobby. Irving shook her hand, asked if she worked there and what she did there. The victim confirmed that she worked there and asked if she could help Irving with anything. Irving then stated that she was attractive and reached out for her handshake uh, to shake her hand, asked her name and introduced himself as Michael. Irving then asked whether she watched football, to which the victim responded that she did not. Irving told her that she should look up him up in the internet sometime. Irving reached out and touched the victim's arm during the conversation without her consent, causing her to step back because becoming very uncomfortable. So all of this happened before he motioned to her to get out of the hallway? Irvin then asked the victim whether she knew anything about having blank to blank to blank. Taken aback by Irvin's comments, the victim responded that his comments were inappropriate and that she did not wish to discuss it further. Irving then attempted to grab the victim's hand again and said he was sorry. If he brought up bad memories, the victim pulled her hand away and tried uh, to back away from Irving as she continued, as he continued to move towards her. During the interaction, two hotel employees noticed the victim had a look of concern on her face and began moving towards Irving and the victim, prompting Irving to state that security had noticed him and extended his hand for another handshake. Seeing that the hotel employees were now in the area and wanted the arch in, the victim returned Irvin's handshake. Irvin then stated he would come by to to find her um, that week when she was working. The victim was left in the interaction to assist another employee who was waiting for her in the dust cutter, and Irvin leaned, leering at her as she walked away. So he reached for her. With his left hand, he's right-handed with a coat in it. That was him actually trying to touch her. The timeline doesn't fit this from at least my standpoint. Again, I'm just Joe the fan here looking at this from my own personal point of view. But nobody noticed that he's holding a jacket in his hand. So... The contact was the jacket touching her, not his hand. The other times were handshakes. He was never even close enough to even try to get a kiss on the cheek or anything. Now, I don't know what words were spoken, but that's a long conversation for somebody who is drunk or, excuse me, intoxicated 
And the only time you really saw her step back was when they were in the corridor in the walkway in the beginning of the conversation. That's the evidence, as far as I know. That's the evidence that I see that makes me kind of say, huh? You decide, okay? For those out there, and, and I know with the way the world is right now, we never go into anything with an open mind. We are tribalized, okay? Either you like Michael Irvin and you believe he's okay, or you don't like the Cowboys and Michael Irvin and you automatically figure he's guilty. But I ask you, look at the affidavit. Read it for yourself. Look at the video. Don't just go by what somebody else says because we do that in society too much. We take everybody else's word for it instead of making up our own mind. And maybe I'm wrong. That's why I ask you, do your homework and your research to try and find out the real answers. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. Peace.